Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. My name is Mark, this is Spagaver Backpacking, and today we're out here for part three of the beginner backpacking series. Today we will be talking all about backpacks. So this one is the third in the series. The first two were getting started and then we got in and went through clothing. Today we'll be talking about all about backpacks, different types of backpacks, what to look for when you're out there getting backpacks, the different options with a backpack, and what would be right for you. So why don't we get right into this, let's go. All right, thanks for coming back. Thanks for joining me today. Like I said, today is all about backpacks. So we're gonna talk about backpacks. Figure out what is the right backpack for you. Now, there are some distinctly different approaches on when to get a backpack and how to go about that. So I am of the, the mindset that you get the smallest backpack that you think you can possibly get away with and then you buy the gear to go in it. Now, you have to keep in mind that you need to know, again, a lot like the, the clothing, you need to know what the environment is that you'll be operating in, what type of temperatures, what type of gear, all of that stuff. Will you be ultralight? Will you be you know, more into mountaineering? Will you be climbing and needing ropes? That type of stuff. Whatever your adventure is going to entail, you need to know that going into buying your backpack. Now, I say get the smallest one you think you can get away with because if you get a big one, people tend to pack their fears. And if you have room, you will find a way to fill it. So if you can get yourself to go with a smaller backpack and then fill it with the stuff that you really need and buy the stuff that fits in it, I think you'll find that you have the kit that you will enjoy a little bit more than if you just go out and buy the first pack, the biggest pack, or you take the approach that many people suggest, which is buy all of your other gear first and then find the backpack that it fits in. If you go that route, you could end up with much too large a backpack just because you're buying the wrong stuff to begin with. So let's go ahead and start talking about backpacks. Now there are many different types of backpacks out there. There are external frame, internal frame, and frameless. So the distinct difference here between the three, the frameless is exactly what it sounds, no frame whatsoever. Internal frame and external frame have some sort of rigid framework to them. External frame is the older style, which you picture you know, guys in the, the 60s and 70s going out backpacking using. And those look like, like this over here. So if you look at that, you can see it has that external frame, that boxy external frame. Now, these are great for certain things. Uh, where you'll see them still used quite extensively, all of the huts along the, the White Mountains, uh, the Appalachian Mountain Club, the AMC, runs these huts. And the, the staff of four or five that run the huts do these runs down to towns and back up using these huge external wooden framed backpacks to carry uh, huge boxes of produce and other food goods that they're bringing up to the, uh, the shelters, up to the huts. So they use these big, huge external frame packs. And what the, what the packs do is they distribute the weight really, really well. So for higher weight excursions, uh, they do work really well. They are bulky, but they do ventilate pretty well as well. They, they keep the pack off of your back a little bit, um, and so there is a little bit better ventilation there. Now, going to an external frame pack. This here is an external frame pack. In here, there is a loop system. So it is like a carbon fiber loop system. Others have stays that are made of aluminum, uh, and there, there are some that are a combination of different, different pieces. But a framed pack is going to have something rigid that keeps the shape of the pack, that keeps it extended. 
Now when you get to a frameless, that's exactly what it sounds like. No frame whatsoever. But as you'll see from one of the packs that I'm about to show you in this video, you can add somewhat of a support or eh, somewhat of a frame to a frameless backpack. So let's get into this a little bit deeper. Now as you get into choosing a backpack, there are three things to think about. How light is it? How strong or durable is it? And what is the price? So the, the kind of uh, general rule is you can select two of the three. Light, cheap, strong. You can select two of the three and get that. So you could get light and cheap. You could get light and strong. Or you could get cheap and strong. You cannot get all three together. They just don't go together. To get something that combines all three, it's usually gonna be expensive. That's, that's usually the, uh, the thing that sets that apart there, is it's gonna be a little bit costlier. But when we're looking at different sizes of backpacks, there are general rules of thumb out there. So if you're talking about a one to three night, overnight type trip, you're looking at something between 20 and 50 liters. Uh, if you're looking at three to five nights, you're looking at somewhere in the 50 to 80 liter range. And then if you're looking at week-long trips, you're usually looking at 70 plus. Now, that is the rule. It's a general rule. It's a loose rule. It's not something that I necessarily follow. I have done three, five, seven-day trips using 35 liters and less. Uh, I have done three day trips using like a 25 liter bag. So it can be done. You just have to know your equipment and know what you can get away with. If you live in an area that is warmer, drier, you can get away with lighter, smaller gear and therefore a smaller backpack. If you live somewhere where bears are a problem and you have to carry a bear canister, Bear canisters are big, they're bulky, and they're gonna take up a lot more room. So you may need either a backpack that accommodates mounting that on the outside or a bigger internal area that you could put that down inside of. So there are a lot of different things to consider. Just make sure you know what you're getting into, what your adventure is gonna look like. Go and visit those local stores. If you have an REI or an EMS or any of those bigger chain stores that do a lot of outdoor stuff, go visit their shops. Check out what they've got. They let you take stuff off the wall, pack it up. So try, try different backpacks, see how they feel. Now, the key to getting the right one is making sure that it's measured correctly. So the way that it gets measured correctly is your C7 vertebrae, which if you go down your neck, it is the first one that has a big protrusion. So that's your C7. It's right between the top of your shoulder blades. So C7 to your iliac crest. So where your hip bones are, the tops of your hips, draw a straight line, and right there, that iliac crest line is what you're gonna use. So over here, this is a picture of the measurement that you'll use to get your torso length. So your torso length is a little bit difficult to get by yourself. If you've got a friend, have a friend help you out. If you have a good outdoor store near you, have them do it for you. They're the experts, they can get the measurement done, and that way you know you've got it nailed. All right, so once you've got your size, the waist belt, some of them have waist belts, some of them don't. Make sure that you're getting one that fits you. Go a little bit smaller, I've found, is better than going big, because if they go too big and you lose weight, you can't adjust them enough and they stay loose. The main, the main reason you use a hip belt is to distribute the weight. A lot of people think a backpack sits on your shoulders. Truly, a backpack sits on your hips. 80% of your weight should be riding on your hips with just 20% on your shoulders or even less, and it's just there really to stabilize the load. So let's take a look at the backpack on my back, and we will go through some of the features of the backpack. Okay, so this is the backpack on. I've got my shoulder straps centered the sternum strap is holding the shoulder straps together. It's not cinched super tight and it's not so loose that it's sliding out to the side. It is right where I want it comfortable and then it is just tightened to hold the shoulder straps right where I want them. The hip belt. Okay, the hip belt, 
the center of that hip belt should be right at that iliad crest. So I've got my hip bones down here. The center of this is riding right on there. So you position it right over that hip, hip bone area, buckle it, and then cinch it down. And that way, as you can see here, I actually don't have much, if any, weight on my shoulders. It's all riding on my hips, which is nice and comfortable. Now, it still stays semi-tight against my chest, and the way that you do that is with these. These are your load lifters. So your load lifters are there to pull the backpack against your back. See, if I had those load lifters loose, it hangs out far too far back. But when I tighten those, now it cinches it up, pulls it against my chest, and it becomes much more stable, and so it's not wobbling around as I'm climbing, as I'm going up the trail walking, it's not flopping side to side. It's staying tight because it's against my sternum and pulled against my back. Now it's not hard against my shoulders right here. I could pull these down and cinch it a lot tighter against my shoulders, but I like to have it a little bit looser up at the top and really carry the weight on my shoulders. So that is the adjustments of the pack. Let's take a look at some of the features of this pack. Okay, so this pack right here, this is my ULA Ohm 2.0. This is a 63 liter pack. This is the biggest pack that I have. Now let's take a look at some of the accessories or features of this pack. So on the front panel, or back panel, depending on how you, how you wanna call it, this one has this mesh compartment. And this is a great area where you can shove stuff. I like to keep things either that I'm going to access throughout the day or that are wet. So great for a tarp, rain fly from your tent, shove it down in there, keep it on the outside, rain gear so that you can get to it quickly. Also on the sides, there are pockets. Uh, sometimes they have drawstrings and cinch cords to, to cinch them down so that you can keep whatever in, is in there secure. You've got lashing straps on the side so that you could stick something like a jacket in there and lash it to the sides. These water bottle pockets are on either side and you can see they're pretty generous sized. Again, straps on both sides. On the hip belt, there are pockets. Now, not all backpacks are gonna have all of these features. Some of them are just clean designs. Just a cylinder that you fill, nothing on the outside. Some of them have hip belts, some of them don't. This one does and it has hip pockets on either side. I find the hip pockets really nice for having stuff that I wanna access, snacks during the day, maps, phone, anything that I'm going to access during the day, I like to have there. This one has a top loading system. Now you will find some that have like a sleeping bag access panel right here that zips open or different access panels to compartments inside. What I like is a backpack that is completely open on the inside. So this one opens at the top. It has this strap that goes over the top. So this strap can be adjustable. And what I like about having this strap with this bigger backpack is if I'm in bear country and I have to carry a canister, that canister can be loaded underneath this and strapped down and it runs right up on top of my backpack and I know that it's secure right there. So you open this up and it's a roll top with a cinch closure. So you open up the cinch, expand it open, and now all of your gear fits down inside. So we will do a video on how to pack a backpack after we get through all the other gear. But for this one, you just shove everything down inside. You can use stuff sacks. You can just shove it in however you wanna do it, whatever works for you. But to close it, you simply cinch it up, roll it a couple of times, put the strap over, buckle it, tighten it down, and now it's nice and secure. So what happens if it rains? Well, some packs have built in on the bottom. Uh, so my kids used to have an Osprey Ace. I know that a lot of the Osprey packs have built in rain ponchos or rain covers that are down at the bottom. You zip them open and then they stay attached and co go over. Uh, otherwise, you can get rain covers and these rain covers work pretty easily you just slide them over they've usually got elastic 
and you still have access to all of the straps and features of your backpack. Now, to get to your water bottle pocket, you would have to slide it out of the way, reach back in there. But that's, uh, that's how a rain cover works. Now, be aware that that rain cover only covers the outside of your pack. If there's rain coming down your back, it's going to get through right here. If this is not all waterproof, it's going to get through. Another thing to note, these are padded hip belts, padded shoulder straps. There's padding behind here, a good padding belt or uh, pad right here. So you can get different amounts of padding on the different packs out there. With the different paddings come different ventilation systems as well. Some of them are gonna be hot. This one would probably be one of the hotter ones because there is no true ventilation here. There are some like the Ospreys that have almost like a trampoline system where there is a mesh that is separated from the actual pack. The z packs arc system creates an arc with the frame and then a trampoline type system where there's a gap between your back and your backpack which allows air to go through there. A lot of people really like that. I find I'm gonna sweat no matter what so it doesn't make as big a difference. Other packs that you'll find have a good amount of padding on here with channels that will route air in and out to keep ventilation on your back. So if that's something that you're interested in, something you're looking for, make sure you check to see whether or not the one that you're looking at has that. Okay, other things that may be of interest to you if you are looking for a pack would be attachment points. So some have attachment points like this here uh, and different straps along the backpack that you could take an ice axe, put the ice axe through, attach it to one of the top ones, and hold it. You could put your trekking poles if you're not using them. If you've gotten to a really technical section of the trail, you're no longer using trekking poles, you could put them in here as well. There are also attachment points where you could attach bags or other gear off the back. Maybe a uh, cast iron skillet, who knows? But those are always available on different packs too so make sure you know what you're going to be carrying so that you can look for the right accessories inside of the pack a lot of times there will be little things that set them apart hydration sleeves so if you had a hydration sleeve a lot of times it would have something like a hole like this this hole here that goes into the inside where you could route a hydra hydration sleeve through and then come down through your shoulder strap system with the hose. I personally don't like those systems because I never know how much water I have in there. I would rather have a bottle that I can see the water every time I take a drink to know how much water I've got and whether or not I need to stop. With a hydration sleeve, for me, the water is usually up against your back because it's usually back in this area. It heats the water up and I never know how much and so I tend not to drink enough. One of the other features I really like about this backpack, and I've included it in several of my other backpacks, is inside attached is this zippered pocket. And so this little zippered pocket right here, what it allows is for me to put my keys and my wallet, ID, money, zip it up, put it down in there. It's attached, it's not coming out, and it'll be there when I get to the truck or the car at the end of the hike or if we're doing a shuttle system and I'm getting in someone else's car and we go and we stop for lunch, I've got money to buy a burger. One thing you'll notice that this pack does not have is a top lid, also known as a brain. So some people like them, other people don't. They can be convenient. They're just another organizational tool that goes over the top and they do provide a little bit of rain protection over rolling and strapping the top of a backpack. Also, some of them can be detached and have a waist belt so they could be used as a day pack if you were doing something like a base camp system. So that's another option that you may wanna consider if you're looking for a backpack. Let's take a look at a couple of other backpacks and the styles that go along with those. All right, this is the pack that I use the majority of the time. This is a 35 liter curved backpack from Light AF. This one is all custom done. This is a Cuban fiber or Dyneema fabric, composite fabric. It has 
padded shoulders, shoulder straps, and then it has options that some of the others don't have. Now, this one loads from the top. It is still just a single cylindrical backpack. It has snaps, two snaps along the top that you snap, and then you roll it just like you would a dry bag. Now, because Dyneema, Cuban fiber, whatever you want to call it, is water resistant and waterproof, this essentially is a dry bag at this point. Water is not getting in there. Therefore, I do not carry a rain cover for this pack. I will still keep my down stuff, any of the insulated stuff that I need, my clothing inside of a trash compactor bag inside of this backpack. But to date, I have been in a, quite a few rainstorms and never had water get through a Cuban fiber backpack. Not saying it can't happen. Again, I have mesh or uh, pockets on the side. These are Dyneema pockets. A mesh panel, stretchy mesh panel that I can shove a lot of stuff in when it's wet. And the cool thing about this backpack is it has an interchangeable hip belt system. So I could go with a standard hip belt, a padded hip belt. I like to use this system. This is a fanny pack. So I've got a fanny pack that sits right up front and that way I can get into anything I want. I will carry my camera in here. I will carry snacks. It has this elastic piece on the outside that my phone can go in. It also has inside of it the pocket that I, uh, I keep my keys and wallet in. Now, this is a frameless pack, but there is an option. Let's take a look. Okay, so one of the options that I had added to this backpack is behind the shoulder straps, the panel that actually gets my back has this shock cord system. And what that shock cord system allows me to do is add two, four, six, I use four panels of a Z-Rest type pad. So you take that pad, you slide it in under this shock cord. And now you have a panel that really is like a frame for your backpack. It sits right underneath the straps, it's held in place, and it creates a nice cushion against your back. If you had something sharp in your back, you don't feel it, and it provides a little bit of framework to the backpack so that you can carry a little bit heavier load. Now, this type of backpack is rated to about 20 to 25 pounds, anything more than that, and it's going to stress a little bit more on your body. It's not designed to really distribute the load to your hips the way that a framed pack is, and so you will find yourself carrying a little bit more of it on your shoulders. Let's take a look at another type of backpack. Okay, this is the smallest of the backpacks that I use. This is a Zimmerbilt Quick Step. This is about, about a 20 to 25 liter backpack. What I like about this is it is still, this one is still made of Cuban fiber, which is water resistant. It has a roll top like my other one, except for instead of it buckling up top, it has two different buckles on the sides that go all the way down to the base, and then you can cinch them up to keep it nice and tight at the top and keep the water out of the top. This one has much thinner shoulder straps, and it has no hip belt at all. So this one is going to be riding 100% on your shoulders. So be aware of that if you think you wanna go really minimalist on your backpack. I've used this one for three day hikes and been just fine and loved it. Uh, actually, I think I did a four day Appalachian Trail hike carrying this and it rides really nice. You've gotta go with a lighter weight. Up to maybe 18 to 20 pounds is all that you're gonna get out of this. You wanna keep it nice and light if you're using a pack like this. Now, I wanted to show one thing that I get asked about quite a bit. On my shoulder straps, I like to keep my water bottles on my shoulder straps. Now, I bought the same exact type of pack for my sons, except I did it in the X-Pack, which is also waterproof, but I got shoulder strap pockets on that one so that they could put a water bottle in the shoulder strap pocket and no problem there. What I do is I actually have this elastic system here. So 
this shock cord holds my bottles. This one's actually not set up for these bottles. But what I'll do is, if it doesn't fit, I'll twist it a couple times. And then you can see the elastic over the top fits right under that cap and then one around there. And when you're walking, it doesn't bounce around too much and it keeps it right there. So this is just shock cord. This is the bigger shock cord. I don't like to use the small shock cord because the bottles will fall out of there, especially when they're full. And if you have it a little bit too big like I do on this top one, what I did was I put two twists in it and then put it over and now it'll hold it pretty well. So that's how I carry my water bottles. Now you can use the water bottle pockets and you can put your water bottles in there, but then you've got to reach around to the side. I like to just have them right here where I can just grab them. Plus, it kind of distributes the weight so it's not all pulling in the back. You have some up front and some in the back, and I think that it kind of stabilizes me just a little bit better. All right, so there you guys go. That is my take on backpacking. On the backpack itself, make sure you get one that fits. That is the most important part. Get one that fits, get measured, that C7 to Iliac Crest measurement is important. Get one that has some adjustability if it isn't custom made for you. Look for the features that make sense for you. Figure out what it is that you're gonna be doing, what type of adventure you'll be on, and that will help you to pick the right backpack. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this today. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions about picking a backpack, or what sort of features you're gonna need given your environment and what you're gonna be getting out on, and you have questions and you don't have a local place to ask, put them down below. I will get back to you, and I will tell you my thoughts, my feelings, and my input on that. All right, guys, appreciate you guys checking this out. Make sure you tune in for the next one where we will be talking about shelters. I will see you down the trail.